Ah, Steam, the number one digital gaming marketplace to exist on Windows, macOS and Linux. And what can I say except it just works and they finally overhauled its dated look and even improved the big picture mode to look like the Steam Deck. Many of you probably didn't even know that Steam has a big picture mode unless you opened it by mistake once. Steam is a combination of a marketplace, a sort of social media and news website, but also a game launcher, which hosts all of your favorite games. It ships with compatibility tools for playing on any operating system you like, you can share your screen and chat with your friends, and of course, install and launch games. But did you know that Steam actually holds a bunch more features that you may have never heard about? Wouldn't it be nice if you could play your games anywhere and however you want? You play on Linux, but use Windows for multiplayer games on the same system, but want to save disk space? Or maybe your internet speed is frustrating to work with, especially when downloading games. In today's video, we're going to cover all of these questions and much more, so definitely make sure that you don't forget to give this video a like, and if you find it useful as well, then why don't you also subscribe to the channel? I appreciate your support. So let's start off with the first feature, which I actually never really thought about all that much until I saw the Steam Deck and the new Pick Picture mode. Here's the situation. You have a gaming PC and like playing games like Witcher 3, Ori or even some PvE shooters like Destiny 2, but sometimes you wanna chill on your couch or even just in bed. Very often your PC is not really ideally located and normally you would need to run an HDMI cable to your TV, which is sometimes not that easy, especially if you also need to consider the signal strength of your controller. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just play games on your TV or even a laptop or similar handheld devices without having to pay double for a cloud service and the proper image quality? Well, turns out you can and it's integrated right into Steam. Steam Remote Play is a way how you can stream your favorite games straight from your PC to literally any smart display or device which either supports the Steam client or the Steam Link app. This allows me to play on my Surface for example with the full power of my PC behind it. When you play on mouse and keyboard then it's best to make sure that both devices are directly connected via Ethernet since Wi-Fi can introduce some weird dynamic latencies. On a controller this does not matter all that much. In the settings you can configure how you want to stream your games. First off, when you are on the same network, Steam should already detect other Steam sessions if you are logged in. If you plan to stream over the internet to some other place, then you can set a pin and add a new device that way. For best performance in your own home, I recommend you to set the Allow Direct Connection IP setting to My Devices to make sure that your PC contacts your remote devices directly while also still only allowing those that you paired manually. While Remote Play would already work now, let's optimize it to make sure that we get the best compromise between image quality and performance. Let's start with the host options. Now I'm gonna say it straight away, a lot of settings here depend on your personal network. The settings I'm gonna show you today were the best for my 1 gigabit local network but don't necessarily apply to you if you only have 100 megabit ports or you play over the internet because I don't think that you have that sort of network speed there. The first option allows you to toggle if you want audio playing on your connected device or on the host system which runs the game. Why would you activate this you might ask? Well, if you're streaming in the same room and your PC is connected to a better audio system than let's say your TV, probably if you're an audio producer, then it makes sense to play audio over that. But for most, you probably want sound coming from your end device and leave it off. The next option is best left off as well, since it can mess with your displays and the scaling. However, the option below depends on your network speed. I personally don't stream my games over the internet and only play in other rooms or on my couch, so I disable this setting given that my local network supports up to 1 gigabits per second. 
If you have an NVIDIA GPU, then you can try enabling NVFPC, since that allows your GPU to capture its display buffer directly. This feature, however, is a bit buggy because it only works with full screen applications, and you might probably know that especially Windows and Linux often treat full screen applications not really as a full screen application. So it's better to leave it off and make sure that you use hardware encoding instead. The setting beneath is kind of useless unless for some reason you can't use hardware acceleration on your GPU. Looking at you Fedora, and you can usually leave it on automatic. If you have a somewhat decent router from your internet provider, you can also see if prioritizing your traffic improves the latency. On my network it didn't really make any difference at all because it's already optimized. But maybe it can help you, especially when several people are connected. For the client options, I chose the following settings for my network. Be aware that the resolution and FPS, as well as the video options, might need to be fine-tuned depending on your system. I generally recommend to set a bandwidth limit even though if it is the highest option, simply to prevent unnecessary latency spikes. And definitely make sure that you enable hardware decoding here. It just makes your game feel way snappier. And there, just like that, I can play my favorite games on my Microsoft Surface and even on my Fire TV stick with a paired Bluetooth controller. With Steam's Big Picture mode, it almost feels like playing on an actual console. I'll leave a link for you in the video description how you can install the Steam Link app on your Fire TV stick as well. Next up, let's talk about a feature that actually even less people know about. Did you know that you can download games straight from another PC? Let's say someone in your family downloaded the game, which you also want to play. If they enable local sharing and also set it to either Steam friends or anyone, then you don't just download a game over the internet with your flat rate speed, but you get it way faster over your local network. If you have a spare old laptop or PC, then you can even transform it into a sort of server for your family. Just download all of the games on it, share it with other devices or friends and download it from there. I mean, sadly, nowadays there are not that many LAN parties anymore, but that would have been a nice feature to have back then. If you are a Linux gamer, then chances are that you are still dual booting Windows, since not all games, especially anti-cheat protected ones, are available yet. If you are anything like me, then at some point rebooting your PC over and over again becomes a bit annoying, especially for games that would work on both systems. But double operating systems, double the required game space, and frankly, that just sucks. It would be way better if you could share those games between two operating systems without having to install them twice. Well, turns out you can. All you need to do is to format your game drive with NTFS, Windows File System. Do a bit of setting up permissions and your Steam library and you're good to go. Now you can launch the same game from whatever you're currently using without having to waste any space. That was a bit fast, I'll leave a link in the video description down below. Oh, and speaking of drives, did you know that you can also create a Steam library on an external device? You could theoretically game off a USB stick, though loading times and maybe even the performance will suffer a lot. If you live in a household with several gamers, then chances are that you want to take a look at family sharing, which allows you to let others play your games with their personal account while you're not. This is quite handy for students with different timetables or for parents which only allow their kids to play a certain time each since they only have to pay once. And there, those were some of the lesser known Steam features. And let me tell you, once you dial in Steam Remote Play for your personal home network, especially with a controller, the experience is kind of mind blowing. So if you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like. And you should also subscribe by the way. You're still here, right? I was hoping that I could show you even more features of Steam, but unfortunately there's only so much time I have. Don't worry though, at some point we will cover all of them. In the meantime, why don't you continue to watch this video next? Okay, what do I usually say here? Eh, you already know, and I'll see you around.